Thank you all for joining us today. I am Caitlin Giles McCormick here with the New Jersey Economic Development Authority. Today's session is an informational overview on the Commission on Science, Innovation and Technology's Pilot Clean Tech Demonstration Grant Program. Now to get us started with the presentation, I'm going to shift things over to the CSIT team um, and Maku Etta, CSIT's Program Manager. Maku, get things started. Thank you so much, Caitlin, and good morning, everyone, and welcome to our informational webinar for the Pilot Clean Tech Demonstration Grant Program. Again, my name is Maku Etta, Program Manager here at the Commission on Science, Innovation, and Technology. I'm also joined by my colleague, Franklin Derrick, Program Officer here at the Commission, who will be later presenting on the application process the grant requirements, scoring, and timeline. Um, we are also joined by our executive director of the commission, Judith Sheft. Um, on, the, on this slide, you'll see a few topic areas that we'll be discussing today, a brief welcome a program overview. We'll talk about the submission process, the eligibility criteria, the required documents, scoring criteria and bonus points, the terms and conditions will provide some important details to be mindful of, as well as the timeline for the grant process. Um, as Caitlin mentioned, we'll save some time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. And again, if you have any questions, please insert them in the Q&A section. So I wanna talk a little bit about the pilot clean tech demonstration program. Um, we're really excited about this initiative. This is the first time that CSIT um, is implementing a program of this nature. Many of our signature CSIT grant programs support very early stage research and development work, the kind of development of the technology. This project differs um, as it aims to support New Jersey-based companies to accelerate and commercialize, accelerate the commercialization and deployment of innovative clean energy technologies by demonstrating the technology's capabilities in a real world setting. So the program is geared towards companies that have a prototype that is ready to demonstrate and test. We'll talk more about the role of the strategic partner and the demonstration site as we walk through the application process. But again, this is not for early stage R and research and develop. This is not an early stage research and development grant for companies that are just in the process of developing their prototype or their technology. If you are interested in those more earlier stage grants, we're happy to connect with you offline to discuss. Um, to, to provide a little bit more detail on our seed grants, which um, support those efforts. The pilot clean tech demonstration grant program um, focuses on specific target industry areas such as chemical and advanced materials, energy distribution and storage, energy efficiency, energy generation, waste processing, water and agriculture, green buildings, and transportation. So there's a wide variety of project areas within the clean energy sector that qualifies for this grant. This is a highly competitive grant. Awards will be given to the highest scoring applicant and the scoring criteria will be again discussed at a later point in this presentation. So I want to talk a little bit about um, the project duration and the award amount. Um, the, pro the pilot program has a budget of $2.5 million to support 10 grants of up to $250,000 each. Applicants must be testing clean technologies in, um, intended to avoid emissions of or recapture of greenhouse gases and or criteria pollutants or to enable such advance, um, avoid, um, avoidance, I'm sorry, of or recapture in the target sectors that were just stated um, prior. The objectives of the program is to provide funding for pilot demonstration projects to test and validate technical performance at customer sites, as well as to de-risk the commercialization process for early stage companies. 
eligible applicants can propose a project of up to 24 months in duration with a maximum budget of $250,000. If awarded and the 24 month duration is not sufficient time to complete the project, applicants do have the opportunity to request a three month no cost extension, which CSIT may approve at our sole discretion. So let's just talk a little bit about the um, distribution and the breakdown of the funds once an applicant is awarded. So upon execution of the grant agreement, 60% um, of the approved pro project budget will be distributed. 30% will be distributed at the completion of the proposed milestones and the remaining 10% upon completion of the project and acceptance of the final report by CSIT. And we'll walk through the budget and milestone document. I wanna let you know that again, this is a very competitive grant um, program based on the interest and the attendees on the line. We, we really want to um, make sure that everyone takes their time in completing this proposal and really read through the notice of funding that is currently posted on our website. So you have all of the details um, as well as all of the documents that you need to pull together prior to the um, to completing the application. There is a sample application template that is on our website that provides you with all of the questions. So again, please take advantage of reviewing these documents beforehand. So how can the funds be used? Um, the $250,000 that I mentioned, the pilot clean um, tech program funds are intended for specific clean tech and clean energy related demonstration projects. All expenses submitted um, will be submitted as a part of the budget proposal must be specifically related to the project for which the grant is sought. All um, applicants will be required to submit a budget of up to $250,000. The budget cannot exceed that amount as a part of the application process. And a budget template, again, um, will be provided in the application, but a sample budget is also provided on our website for viewing. The following expense categories are ineligible for funding, um, in relation to this program, marketing and customer discovery specific to the innovation, any expenditures incurred before the effective date, um, the date representing the last date of the execution of the grant agreement by the parties and fees related to conferences or events. In addition, no more than 10% of the budget proposed for the project in the aggregate may be spent on IP, patent, um, prosecution, and licensing related expenses. Now, while we understand the um, importance of patenting your technology, the main goal, again, for this particular grant is to sp support the direct testing and, and demonstration of your technology. So I'll stop there. Um, so I will introduce um, again, Franklin, to really walk us through the application process, um, the submission process, as well as our scoring and the timeline for the grant. Franklin. Thank you, Marco. The Pilot Clean Tech Grant Program application is formatted in two parts. A pre-application, which requires a brief intake information and a letter of intent and the full application, which includes a technical proposal, budget, milestone, and required documents. The pre-application opens on December 7, 2022, excuse me, at 10 a.m. and closes on December 30th, 2022, at 5 p.m. Applicants are strongly encouraged to start preparing for application by gathering required documents ahead of time. We will talk about those documents in the course of this presentation. It is important to note that on the CSIT website, a sample application is provided for prospective applicants to review. The website is 
njeda.com slash CSIT under the Pilot Clean Tech Demonstration Grant Program. When starting the pre-application, applicants were required to create a user ID and password to log in and out of the application portal. If at any point you run into issues with the login process, please email us at csitcleandemo at njedia.com and our IT office would immediately address the issue. When logged in, the applicant will have to select the Pilot Clean Tech Demonstration Grant Program before entering into the Welcome and Eligibility page. Applicants must meet all of the program eligibility requirements at a time of application and throughout the duration of the project to be eligible for the grant program. We will review the eligible requirements in the upcoming slides. The application information section requires the applicants to provide basic contact information about the company, that is the name, address, and phone number, et cetera. The primary contact information includes the contact information for the principal investigator. A short and brief description, company description, excuse me, will be required as well as a project description. Please be mindful that as you are completing the pre-application and full application, there are specific word limits designated for all of the narrative questions. If you exceed the word count limit, a message will pop up for you to revise your answers. This application requires the identification of a strategic partner and a letter of intent, LOI for short. A strategic partner is an entity, a company, a university or research center, etc., that directly supports the core demonstration project and serves as a demonstration site for the project. Basic information about their strategic partner, which includes the name, the company, the company's address, and phone number will be required from applicants. A letter of intent must be issued by the strategic partner on their company's letterhead. The letter should state the willingness of the partnership, support for the demonstration project, explain their role and expertise as a demonstration site, and validate the goals of the demonstration project. Applicants are strongly encouraged to start working on their letter of intent before beginning the pre-application process. Applicants who possess a letter of intent will have the ability to upload it within the pre-application stage. Applicants without a letter of, in of intent will be able to acknowledge that they do not possess this letter at the time of the pre-application and will be able to upload it within the full application stage. Once the letter of intent portion is completed, the applicant will have completed the pre-application and will reach a page that requires a submission code. CSI to staff will review the pre-application submission to confirm applicant's eligibility. Once the review is complete, a resubmission code will be emailed to the applicant to move forward with the full application. Please note, that the initial review of the pre-application is, is not intended to advise applicants on the strengths of the application. Next slide, please. Now let's talk about a full application. The full application begins with a request for more detailed contact information on the applicant company. This is followed by a series of standard questions that touches on diversity, equity, and inclusion measures. This questions helps to define the population of applicants. Applicants will be required to complete an employee log. One of the eligibility criteria for this program is that applicants has a minimum of two full-time employees and a maximum of 50 full-time employees all calculated on a full-time equivalent basis, FTE for short, which is equal to 35 hours per week. The log should include everyone that works for the company, paid or unpaid. Applicants should keep in mind that they would be required to provide employee verification documents for each of their employees listed in the log. 
We will talk about the supported types of employee verification documents later in this presentation. From this point, the applicant begins the technical proposal aspect of the application process. Applicants will be required to provide a full narrative of their project. Please remember to pay attention to the word count limit while being clear and concise with your response. Questions in this section, in this sections, excuse me, focus on the strength of the technology, the project description, and implementation of the demonstration project. It also touches on any IP or IPs obtained and expected risks. A budget and milestone proposal is required for this application. A link to the template is already provided in the application for applicants to download, complete, download, complete, and upload. A sample template can be found on the CSIT website for review. Please remember, please remember to keep your milestone detailed clear and aligned with your budget. This will determine the disbursements for this program. The go to market questions touches on how the project aims to market to the target population, the marketing channels and the competitors. The economic and environmental impact questions highlight the number of jobs the companies aim to create and the impact of the technology on the workforce market. It also touches on how the technology aims to curb, to mitigate greenhouse gases and criteria policies. Finally, applicants will be required to complete the legal questionnaire. This is a standard procedure to check that the company is in good legal standing. Upon completion of the legal questionnaire, applicants will be asked to upload all required documents before submitting the application. Once the application is submitted, an applicant cannot access the application for any changes. Next slide, next slide, please. In this slide, we'll walk through the submission process. The entire submission process can be summed up in three main steps, which are application, review, and approval. Upon completion of a full application, the CSI to staff will review the applications for document completeness. Applicants missing documents will receive a resubmission letter with a deadline stating that the applicant has 10 days from the day the letter was emailed to the applicant to respond to the letter with, missing, with the missing application documents. Applicants should be mindful to check their emails for correspondence from our, CS, from our office. Uh, all complete applications will have an opportunity to participate in virtual presentations. Applicants will be notified of the date and time for their presentation. Please note that the virtual presentations are not scored. These presentations are intended to provide the subject matter experts with more context and information about the project, which would help with their reviews of the applications. Applications will be scored by CSIT and EDS staff. Please keep in mind that this program is highly competitive, like Michael identified earlier. To be considered for an award, applic applicants must make at least 30 points out of 50. In a little bit, we'll be talking about the scoring criteria. CSIT will compile all scores and make award recommendations to CSIT board sometime in May of 2023. Next slide, please. Now let's talk about the eligibility criteria. Note that applicants must meet all of the eligibility criteria at the time of application and throughout the review period. The eligibility criteria include that applicants should be in good standing to conduct business in New Jersey as demonstrated by a current New Jersey tax clearance certificate. Applicants must have no more than 50 full-time equivalent employees calculated on a 35 hour work week at time of application. Applicants must have a minimum of full, two full-time employees. 50% or more of the work of applicant employees, including founders and contractors 
should be conducted in New Jersey. And this is also calculated on a full-time basis, basis, which is 35 hours per week. Next slide, please. The pilot demonstration project must be conducted in New Jersey. The pilot demonstration project is defined as a core project posed by the applicant. Companies must have applicants or companies and their companies must have less than $5 million in five million, excuse me, dollars in previous calendar year sales revenue. The proposed project must be between TRL six prototype systems, prototype system verified to system product system slash process prototype demonstration in an operational environment, better prototype system level. So TRL-8, system incorporated in commercial design, so actual system process completed and qualified through tests and demonstration. The demonstration project must be between technology readiness level, TRL for short, range of six to eight. At a minimum, a TRL of six is required for this program. Provided on the program's webpage is a link to an Excel sheet from MySider to help applicants to calculate their TRL scores. It is vital that a company has a prototype ready to demonstrate prior to applying for this grant. Next slide, please. Now let's talk about the required documentation for this application. This include a completed online application, a letter of intent issued and signed by the strategic partner, budget and milestones proposals, uh, a template, an Excel template has been attached in the um, application page on the website page, uploaded results from technology and readiness, technology calculator Excel file, link is also provided on the program's webpage. Employee information as appropriate for applicable company structure and staffing. That is most recent NJ WR, WR30 for W2 employees or 1099 for contractors, shareholder agreement or K1 or offer letters. Please note that if a professional employment organization, PEO for short is utilized, the applicant must submit confirmation of a PEOA form issued by the NJ Department of Labor. These confirmations are issued on an annual basis and are valid for a year. Applicants can explore the link below for further information. Next slide, please. Also, applicants will need to provide a summary of most recent internal payroll, indicating each employee name, including founders and numbers of hours worked per week. Most recent company tax filing, Federal 941, and either an NJ CBT 100 Schedule A, or Form 1065 or Form 1040 Schedule C, or whichever is applicable to the organizational form of your business, showing the total gross receipts or sales for the year. A current NJ tax clearance certificate listing New Jersey Commission on Science, Innovation, and Technology as the agency. Applicants can explore the link provided on how to, on information on how to obtain their tax clearance certificates. All certificates listing another state agency will be rejected. If applicable, copy of women slash minority slash veteran owned business NGO certification. Also, we've provided a link for applicants to explore. Assigned application certification and a completed CSIT legal department questionnaire. Next slide, please. The scoring criteria for this program. Applications will be scored on four areas, which includes market opportunity up to 15 points, innovation up to 15 points, feasibility up to 10 points, and economic and environmental impact up to 10 points making a total of 50 points. Like I mentioned earlier, applicants must score a minimum of 30 points to be considered for an award. The bonus points. Each of the certifications 
minority owned, women owned or veteran owned carriers 10 points. While the other bonus point considerations carry five points each. These include the that the company is using technology initially developed at an NJ university under an executed license agreement with such university or the, primary, the applicant's primary place of business slash research and development is located within an opportunity zone eligible census tract or a government restricted municipality. Again, applicants must note that they have applicants please note that they must score a minimum of 30 points to be assigned a bonus point when applicable. Next slide, please. Let's talk about the terms and conditions. All awardees must commit to providing their economic report annually to CSIT for a period of five years. This will be outlined in their grant agreement. All awardees must agree that its employees, that is everyone listed on their employee log, will conduct at least 50% of the company's work calculated on a full-time equivalent basis in New Jersey for a period of three years. Please note that the default or non-compliance to this requirements will result in the defaulting company paying back in full the grant award within 60 days from the default date. Our share, awardees shall participate in future CSIT and or NJEDA alumni events. This includes serving as panel members, engaging in interviews about their experience with the program. CSIT may conduct site visits to learn about the company and the proposed project at some point during the duration of the project's period. Next slide, please. Please note that the information that you see on this slide is also can also be found on the notice of funding. The pre-application opens on December 7th, 2022 at 10 a.m. and closes on December 30th, 2022 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Application, full application portal opens on December 12th, 2022 at 10 a.m and closes on December 3rd, 2023 at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Questions and inquiries accepted through the application deadline should be submitted to CSIT Clean Demo at njeda.com. All questions received and answers provided will be answered in the form of a frequently asked questions FAQ document which will be posted and continuously updated on the CSIT website. Next slide, please. Applicants may provide an electronic application certification by uploading a signed PDF. However, if an applicant provides, prefers, excuse me, not to provide an electronic signature, the applicant may follow the instructions on the notice of funding and online portal to provide a signature. Next slide. Please take note of this important information. Applicants with missing documentation will receive an email, like I mentioned earlier, from CSIT to submit or resubmit any missing or incomplete required documentation by 5 p.m. on the 10th business day following the day on which it receives such notification. Any application that does not include all the documents specified or contain documents that have not been completed will be considered incomplete and will not be evaluated. Applicants are encouraged to obtain copies of New Jersey documentation early in the process of completing the application since some state systems have experienced longer than usual processing times. Next slide. Tips on how to write a winning application. Number one, be detailed and clear when describing your innovation projects. Secondly, please start early and review before you submit. Third, fully answer each question. Fourthly, stay clear of jargon. And finally, submit your application before 5 p.m.
And these are our um, program timeline for you to take note of. Like I, um, just to reiterate, like I mentioned earlier, we're having the webinar today being the 30th of November and the pre-application portal opens at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and closes at 5 p.m. Excuse me, pre-application opens at 10 a.m. on the 7th of December Eastern Standard Time and closes on the 30th of December at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The full application opens at 10 a.m. on the 12th of December 2022 and closes on the 3rd of February at 5, 2023 at 5 p.m. Awards are expected to be made by third quarter of 2023. Next slide, please. The application will be posted and can be found on the CSIT website. If you have any questions or inquiries, you can send them to the CSIT Pilot Clean Tech website at csitcleandemo at njeda.com. Thank you. Thank you, Franklin. Um, so we'll jump to any questions. I see we have a few questions in the Q&A. And again, if you have additional questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A section. Um, or even if there, we'll also check the chat section to see if there are any questions there. So one of the questions we received is, can there be more than one strategic partner? For example, um, one for the product or system contract manufacturer and one for the product system operation and implementation. That's absolutely fine. Um, we, we in, you can provide two separate letters of intent from both strategic partners stating their role and responsibility. So we are, that is completely fine to have more than one strategic partner. Um, another question touches on, as long as the applicant is in, is in New Jersey based company, does a strategic partner and, and demonstration project need to also be located in New Jersey? Um, again, the strategic partner, the demonstration project um, does have to be located in New Jersey, but the strategic partner does not have to necessarily be located in, in New Jersey. But again, you must follow the requirements, um, the eligibility requirements of that 50% or more of the work has to be done in New Jersey. So again, if there are individuals within the strategic partners company that are working on the project um, in New Jersey, you just have to be mindful of that particular eligibility requirement. But no, the strategic partner does not have to be located in New Jersey, but the demonstration project does need to be um, located in New Jersey. Will um, A copy of these slides will be provided. Um, we will post them on the CSIT website um, in the, probably by the end of the week, um, but they will be available on the website. Is there, um, or is there funding opportunity announcement that contains all of these details? Well, again, the webinar will be posted on the website. The slides will be posted as well as this recording will be posted on our www.njeda.com forward slash CSIT under the pilot clean tech demonstration program, you'll be able to you'll be able to find the recording as well as the webinar slides. The awards will be we intend the we hope to take the recommendations to our board, which approves all awards um, in May of 2023. So award announcements will be made a little soon after our May board meeting. Um, around that time. Let's see what else. Can the budget be over 250,000, but we only apply for 250,000? Absolutely. So the budget template will require you to provide a budget of up to $250,000. The full budget for the project can, can, will, will, possibly be more than 250,000, but we do not request for you to submit that full budget. Your template, your budget 
it for your budget template should only include up to $250,000. So the portion of the budget that this grant will support is what you will be submitting. Um, but we absolutely understand that these budgets are larger than what the grant is providing, but we, we only need a budget of what the $250,000 will cover. Another question is our market is international. I have two potential pilot host sites, um, one outside of New Jersey, um, but there are none in, inside of New Jersey. Can I go forward with the pilot demonstration outside of New Jersey under these circumstances? Unfortunately not. Un Again, if you need assistance in identifying a demonstration site, we are happy to um, talk with any company that's looking for a demonstration site or a strategic partner that, per that has the capabilities of what your company needs. But the demonstration projects must occur within New Jersey. So with the grant announcements being made around the May um, 2023 period, um, there's a good chance that the projects would, after the grant announcements are made, approval letters are sent out, um, and grant agreements must be, of course, signed. Um, a, a, a clear start date would be around that early July date, if you're thinking about when the start dates will be. So that's roughly the timeline that we would be working with. Will there be some grant terms and agreements, um, terms and co conditions contract that awardees need to sign? And if so, is there a copy of this contract available on the website? So there will be a grant agreement that all, um, that must be signed um, by the awardees once approved and they, the grant agreement will list out some very clear terms and conditions. Um, that has not been developed as yet. Um, if you would like to talk about just some previous, but there are terms and conditions within the notice of funding that are replicated within the grant agreement. Um, and we're happy again to talk a little bit more about those conditional terms and agreements, but the actual agreement document will not be posted on, is not posted on our website, but we're happy to talk about our um, terms and agreements that goes into um, the grant agreement. Let's see, do we have, so again, another question regarding the demonstration site, does the test need to be done at the strategic partner or can the demonstration be done in a lab in New Jersey? Again, the demonstration site can vary from a research center, um, a, a, again, a lab at a, at a university, um, at another, uh, com another company's site. So yes, um, again, if that strategic partner falls within the criteria, of how it's defined within the grant, then they can be a demonstration site. And of, of course, um, the, the, the demonstration project itself um, must, be, must occur in New Jersey. So I think that covers everything. Do we have any questions on the chat that we may have missed? Let's just see here. Okay. So again, all of the questions, um, in case you missed any, any of the answers, will be um, inserted into our FAQ document and uploaded in on the CSIT website. Um, if you have additional questions, feel free to email us directly at CSITcleandemo at njeda.com. That is the direct email for this program. And we will quickly respond to those questions 
And those questions, um, if they're not on our FAQs, we also will upload them to our FAQ. So the FAQ document is updated regularly with additional questions that, that really just come up throughout the process of this application. Um, we encourage everyone to review the notice of funding prior to applying for this grant. Um, it is a two-part grant, so it's a bit different than some of our typical C grants. Um, and we want to and please review the eligibility requirements very carefully um, before you begin. Some of the documents, as Franklin mentioned, that we would encourage that you start working on are things like the tax clearance document. Um, that is issued by the Office of Taxation. Sometimes that takes a bit of time to receive. If you have received a previous tax clearance or have submitted a previous tax clearance to us for a previous grant, just make sure that the tax clearance is up to date. That document is only good for six months. So if you're past the six month um, point, you will have to get um, obtain a new tax clearance. Um, as another document, of course, is the letter of intent. Um, please, um, again, connect with possible strategic partners or um, that will act as a possible demonstration site. Again, if you need um, assistance in identifying one, we are happy to discuss that with you. Um, we encourage for you to have that letter of intent in the pre-application stage but you, you can opt to submit it during the full application stage, but we encourage you to, to begin that conversation and have um, that document ready um, as well. The goal, this is, this is a competitive grant, but it's not a first come first serve. Please take your time in completing the application. Do not wait for the last minute, but the first applications you know, the first couple of applications do not mean that they'll be, uh, you know, they'll be accepted and awarded. Um, all applications that are complete will be scored, will be reviewed and scored. And But so take your time in reviewing the application and in completing the, um, the answers. Again, there is a sample application with all of the questions on our website for you to review prior to actually going on the portal and completing the application. So take the opportunity to do some, some pre-work prior to starting your application. If you have any technical issues, again, email us at csitcleandemo at njeda.com um, and we'll be able to, um, our IT office will be able to support any technical issues and in logging into the portal. I just wanna thank everyone for joining us today. And we look forward to receiving all of your great applications. Um, and thank you again. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, with any questions that you may have.